Sama dengan pemanggil ini, penyokong tegar pasukan Everton. Apa khabar, bro? Hello? Hello? Eh, takut you, bang. Hello? Hello? Bro, tak dengar? Cakap kuat sikit. Uh, Okey, boleh dengar ke, bang? Boleh dengar, bro. Nama siapa, bro? Dari mana? Uh, Yalish from Shalam. Okey, ingat Yalish from Everton. <laughs> yeah. Yalish from Goodison. Yeah. <laughs> Yalish, okay. uh, perasaan anda selepas kemenangan ini, apa yang anda nampak? Happy, puas? Um, uh, the thing is, Uh, Brentford was very bad. Uh, comparatively, in the Premier League uh, action, we, we the past Premier League game, they were far better in the Premier League. But in this game, uh, there was a change of play uh, in the counter attack, and uh, Frank Lampard uh, beautifully uh, put the team in place. And there was a counter attack football that I've never seen this season under Safa Benitez. Right. And uh, the thing is. We did a lot of mistakes in the defense line, like uh, Seamus Coleman giving back to a silly pass to Pickford. There are a lot of fa uh, falls in the game. Right. Uh, but under final Lampard, I think there are players to to, uh, to rank up in the, uh, in the starting eleven, like uh, Anthony Gordon. There are, there's a uh, winger as Dobbin, Patterson, and there's a lot of young players that can improve under yeah. Frank Lampard. And Frank Lampard would. Can like he did like his games uh, due to Patterson and there's a lot of uh, improvement uh, yet to come. Okay. And the right back position was been a very very big position for us for uh, like past four years because Sh uh, Seamus Coleman, our club legend, yeah, uh, he was just aging and it was just a big weakness. And we bought a uh, right back from Rangers and that's a, that's a good signing, a yeah. good model of signing that we didn't do in the past like uh, Delph and Old. Players and yeah, I think I think it's a it's a good good signing and yeah, hope hope we can do better. Uh, yeah. All right, congratulations, uh, Yalish. Just one quick question before I let you go. Um, what is uh, your feelings and expectation, uh, or perhaps are you excited to see uh, uh, Christian Eriksen back to the Premier League? Um, mm, I expect not to get relegated. I I don't think we would get relegated. But uh, yeah, if if we get into the mid table, I think at this point every Evertonian hopes that we get into the top top. Uh, yeah. end. But it's, I think it's far far out of reach. So I think mid table would be good. And next season, because Donny Van der Beek is going to leave because it's just a loan and with no option to buy. So signing a similar player to Donny Van der Beek and his age range would um, help us, I guess. Okay, Yalish, Yalish, uh, quickly, actually, my question was, are you excited to see Christian Eriksen back in the Premier League? At Brentford. Oh, oh, oh sorry, At sorry, Brentford. Sorry. Uh, I heard it wrong. Um, Christian Eriksen, yeah, it's a, he's, a, he's a great player because my father's a Spurs fan. And, uh, yeah, he just uh, loved when the transfer happened. And, yeah, I'm excited because he's a great player, he's a great player. All right. And uh, a midfielder like him, it's hard to see. Okay, thank you so much, bro. I appreciate your time. Take care. Ya, yeah, thank you. Alright. Itu dia. Yalish, penyokong Everton. Tapi uh, memang kita nak cerita uh, uh, about uh, Christian Eriksen ni dah lama sebenarnya. So, sesuatu, it's it's one of the the most exciting stories in world football I love actually. It. I think it's so, yeah. I'm a Spurs supporter. Look, I grew, yeah, man. No, I wouldn't say I grew up, but I've spent the best part of a decade watching this guy play. And what happened at the Euros mm. is one of the most horrific and harrowing things I've ever witnessed. Yeah. And for him to be back playing, I think it's great. I just hope that he that he's going to remain healthy. I was watching uh, Fabrice Mwamba, friend of the show. Mm -hmm. We all know what happened to him. Yeah. And he said, look, you've, you've had a great career. Do you really want to risk it all by going back into it? Yeah. That's my only thing. But as long as he stays healthy yeah. and he performs with the ability that we know he can, even at 75%, he'd be a great addition. Yeah, to yeah. I think the doctors have cleared him, right? He, although he has an ICD and it's something that's, that's not allowed in Italy, according to their law, But in the Premier League, it's allowed. And it's the first time it's actually happening in the Premier League. So mm. here's the question that I want to pose to you guys. It's an odd one. Because when you think about players who saw what happened, right? Um, England players, English players, whoever, everyone that's playing in the Premier League, right? How do you think that players akan approach Ericsson dalam pelawanan? Mengetahui apa yang dah terjadi kepada dia dan nampak apa yang terjadi, Kish dengan Eli. I, aku rasa for the first few games, akan ada hesitation. 
you you cannot run away from it. I think it's human psychology to as much as it's 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 a it's the most competitive league on the planet, but you cannot escape. It cannot escape your thought whenever you go up against Christian Eriksen. Mm that you will think about that incident, that you will be extra careful, that you might not make certain challenges mm. that you usually would, and you'd be a bit more tame in dealing with him. I think that might exist right. dalam beberapa pelawanan pertama. Tapi pandangan aku, kalau dia main dengan konsisten, dan kalau dia tidak menunjukkan apa-apa isu, aku rasa by the time sampai 6, yeah. 7, 8, 9 pelawanan, dia akan dia takkan balik full normal, tapi akan jadi lebih baik from the Sebab before. apa yang aku diberitahu, Eli, is intensity yang dia buat luar padang sekarang ini dalam persiapan dia hmm. is jauh lebih intensif daripada 90 minit bola sepak. So, bunyinya macam dia dah ready ya, Hati untuk cabaran. Hati dia jantung dia boleh take it. Lah. Yeah. Right? I think firstly, I have to agree dengan Adam. It's a fantastic signing. Guys, kita ni tengok bola sepak, right? And we watched the first game. It was the first game of Euro, right? No? no opening, it, one of the opening. Their first game. Yeah. Yeah. Their first game. Opening of that group. Ah. And I think to see, to witness that and for you to carry that trauma, I can see even mm. it impacted us in a lot of ways, right? And to see that he is going to be celebrated, nak bawa dia masuk balik ke dalam APL, for him to say yes to this deal to and to choose Brentford as that I would say like what small scale club as compared to others, there's, right? There's Danes though there, and he was coached by Thomas Frank before. Yeah, mm. and Thomas Frank coached under 17. him under seventeen, right? Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why they said yes to this. Second, the, that kind of signing makes so much sense when it comes to midway signing um, January transfer window. Sometimes people jump on you. What do you call it? Knee jerk reactions like you mm. sign like deadline, punya Just kind for of, the signings sake of signing and everything. Because, yeah. And I think in terms of we talk about it, um, kenapa kehadiran Ericsson akan bagi banyak sangat logik untuk find solutions to whatever Brentford is okay. facing now. But Attacking the question output. is, is he going to be the same player? Even 75%. Okay, let's see. Even let's at see. 75%, he'll be a great signing. Look, you're underestimating how good he no, is. No, no, I'm not. I'm, not. I'm just no, asking the question. It's just that his yeah. numbers are so Post strong. Incident. Yeah. Yeah. Like you look, I mentioned just now, Beckham. Him and Beckham are the only players four consecutive seasons to get 10 or more assists in the Premier League. That's right. brilliant. His numbers are up there with the likes of Kevin De Bruyne. We talk so yeah, much about De Bruyne. I don't deny that. I'm just saying, that, uh, uh, after what he's been through, no, but, but that's the thing. Lui, that's the thing. Hidup, yeah? don't, we shouldn't put high expectations on him exactly. on the first few games. But to give you to bagi example, uh, dekat Malaysia, kita ada Sharil Fikri, mm. a Malaysian striker mm. with a hole in his heart. Exactly. He was once told that he couldn't play football anymore. He yeah. stopped it for almost six months. Pergi balik, got second, third opinions. Certain doctors yeah. told him, yes, you can. But you could only play for a short period. Mm. He came back to football. Initially, awal-awal tu memang dia sendiri risau. There was a whole documentary about him. And he was initially fearful for his own self, right? But after a while, as you manage your own body and you understand it and you learn how to control it and everything, you learn to deal with it and you can hit you adapt, incredible right? heights. Yeah. And I have no doubt that Christian Eriksen bar maybe the first few games where he tries to adapt back mm, to the pace mm. of the league and understands his new condition and his body at the moment, there will come a point when he's fully familiar with it yeah. and we might see Christian Eriksen hitting his peak form again. In other ways, some people would say that it's actually, uh, if you compare to Sharif Fikri's situation, he's got an ICD in his side, which yes. literally means if, if it stops again, it will automatically It helps start. him. That's it what he said him. in an yeah. interview as well. He says, if anything, I'm a little, I'm a little less fearful now yeah. because if touch wood, if it were to happen again, yeah. I have a device Support inside of me to help me out instantly yeah. Yeah. than before. And First yeah. player in the Premier League to have an ICD. Yeah, that, that's historical. It says man. a lot of my stuff. I mean, what, what me, a story, right? For me, I've met him, I think, a few times now, and he is a really, really nice guy. And therefore, just a hu on a human level, I just mm. want to wish him the best. I, I just wish that we had the same opportunities as you, Adam. You I know, know, I'm extremely lucky. Talking about Brentford punya formation, they have always played dalam 3-5-2 punya formation, yep. right? So now, bila Ericsson balik and dia akan ambil that number 10 role, mm. it will change to 3-4-1-2 for him to find the pockets between the space. Mm. Mm. I'm saying, right, going back to your question just now yang I tak dapat nak jawab. You tanya soalan, is he going to be the same player? Yeah. My answer to that, no matter what kind of player he's going to be after post this incident, he's going to definitely contribute to a yeah. substantial and contribution to I think to it's easy to forget as Brentford. well. Yeah. Last season, he won the Scudetto, right? Yeah. He won it in Italy. Yeah. First half of the season, they expected him to be sold. 
that he wasn't going to play a part in Antonio Conte. And he bounced back. And he bounced back yeah. in the second half. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. was a crucial part. I think there He's was overcome adversity. There, there was reports about him training by himself in a car park yeah. or something. Yeah. Like, even now, he went to somewhere near the border of Switzerland or something. I think it was it was in Chiazzo or something like that. And he was training there by himself. He was just doing things, not knowing the fact that he was ever going to get back to competitive Overcoming football. Overcoming adversity. Okay, That's what now he does. having him, now having him, do you think Brad Pitt is going to get relegated? I could have but I could have taken lagi. It's a team game. It's a team game, it's a team game yeah. and, 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 and okay. I don't think he solves all their problems. They still have yeah. banyak yes. lagi masalah. Yang Scoring goals wise, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Aku tak sabar sebenarnya sebab aku rasa right. the minute uh, Christian Eriksen turun padang is going to be celebrated all around. Yes. Satu dunia. Could be the greatest story in world, uh, world sport.